Sweet home. In Ramsbottom Cemetery lives Britain's most notorious rogue trader. People sometimes ask me, you're not scared living in the graveyard? No, you were scared living in the graveyard. They're all dead. There's no problems in the graveyard. The problems begin when you drive out of the graveyard. Vance Miller has been accused of conning hundreds of customers and making millions of pounds selling shoddy kitchens. He was the first person in Britain to be served with a stop now order, a new law demanding that persistent rogue traders clean up their act. But the complaints about Vance's kitchens have continued to pour in. Now he's back in court, charged with breaching his stop now order and faces up to two years in prison. Vance Miller from Ramsbottom near Bury was in court again today, accused of ripping off his customers by selling them shoddy kitchens. As for the latest allegations against his kitchens firm, he told our reporter Stuart Flinders, business is booming. Vance has a long list of criminal convictions and a reputation of being a law unto himself. He's a showman, but he can also be violent. He threw a fire extinguisher at a BBC reporter who went to his factory. His reputation led one BBC programme to take extreme precautions. When they tried to interview him, he wasn't talking. At his fortress light factory in Oldham, his loyal workforce keep out unwanted visitors. Please don't burn more stones. You could endanger the filming crew. Thank you. No journalist has ever made it inside. We wanted to know what was going on behind the high fences and barbed wire. Was it really a multi-million pound scam run by a ruthless con man? We asked Vance if we could film his business in the month leading up to his trial's verdict. Surprisingly, he let us in. Right, I'm going to start going through the names now. We let everybody know two quid a time. Okay, starting with Bernard. Hello, Vance. Mark. Yeah. Little John. <laughs> yeah, you've just been docked two quid, pal. Why didn't you not have your radio on? Oh, I just unloaded a wagon, sorry. Anybody that doesn't answer the radio gets fined two quid. Why is that? Well, what's the point of fucking having a radio if they're not going to use it? So how big is this uh, place? Uh, half a million square foot. It's the largest mill in the north of England. <laughs> We're the fourth largest kitchen retailer in the country on volume of kitchens going out. The majority of the gear comes from China. These cabinets down here, they've just come in yesterday from Poland. Pioneer, this comes in from Africa. Yeah, we don't mess them out really. Vance's prices drastically undercut the competition. For under a thousand pounds, a self-assembly kitchen arrives at the customer's door, complete with units, worktops, oven, hob, extractor, sink, and even taps. Vance sells 400 kitchens a week, and it's strictly cash on delivery. His annual turnover exceeds 20 million pounds. Of course we take a lot of cash, we take a fucking humongous amount of cash. Red is, yeah? Sweet, it's there, is it?
That's everything, yeah? Vance has always been good at making money, and for the last 20 years, he hasn't let the law get in his way. Over a pint, he agreed to run through his criminal CV. The first charge I ever had was, you know, handling a bleacher beacon. How old were you then? Um, 16, I think. Then uh, 17. Um, bought a lot of stolen jewellery. These guys were uh, knocking about with a big bag of stolen jewellery, so a greedy arse here. I thought, whoa, you know, I'll have a bit of that. I'll make a few quid on that. So I bought it, sold it. 18 months for it. I got charged with bringing in six million quid of gold bullion from Belgium into England. Assaults, I got done for assaulting a fucking police officer. Kidnapping, fucking hell, that were a good one, weren't it? Fucking hell. No categories, no insurance on my car, and having an accident in Morocco, they locked me up for a few days there. Smuggling diamonds into America. <sighs> yeah, do I look like a fucking gangster? But it's no wonder. No, it's a fuck's sake wonder. No, it's no wonder, really. No. Quite entertaining, isn't it, really? And it's no wonder that they kind of think, oh, this guy's gone into kitchens now. Uh, he's going to Class A kitchens, yeah. Yeah, Class A kitchens, that's probably what they're looking at. A dangerous fucking tackle them kitchens, you know. Fucking hell, man. You can ruin a man. You can destroy a man. Customer service. But for some customers, his kitchens were no laughing matter. So have you still not received anything yet, Mr McCorney? No, I haven't, no. Just simply couldn't do that because we don't have an express delivery service, you see. I don't want a shaft at anybody, I just want a kitchen that's working. The kitchen rogue. Dreams turn to despair. Last year, Vance sold 20,000 kitchens, received 180 complaints to trading standards and made dozens of newspaper headlines. More victims of a rogue trader. The return of the kitchen rogue. Kitchen rug exposed by the Manchester even News is facing in jail. I really do apologise about the inconvenience caused. I think you're being very reasonable. I've been trying to get through for ages and ages and ages. Court bans kitchen rugs. The last saloon for the kitchen cowboy. The most disgusting con merchant ever to afflict the British public. I haven't got the kitchen tomorrow, so I'm going to do, I'm going to phone my solicitor and I'm going to phone the cheese and standards people. This is disgusting. These things are a chance to do, or we will start to have a meal for you. Frustrated customers mostly complain of missing items, damaged goods, and delays in delivery. There are some real genuine complaints. There's some things that, you know, when I look at it, when I, as I explained to you today, one where a woman had to wait six weeks for a leading dresser, a dresser unit to arrive. Well, six weeks, yeah, and we were, we were charged with not delivering within a reasonable time. Well, like, well, what can I say? It's like, yeah, you're right, you know, you're on it. It is totally unreasonable that we would deliver six weeks late. This product, the poor woman's got to live with a big gap on her wall for six weeks. But when you're delivering 20,000 kitchens a year, 400 kitchens a week, Something like, you know, things like this are going to get through the net. Yeah, you're right, Your Honour, it is not reasonable, but is it reason to send me to jail, for God's sake? If you're buying a car, the car is built in the factory. With our job, the product has to leave the factory in about 3,000 different components. And when I say 3,000 components, the hinge can be 10 different components. So when I say 3,000 components, it's like 30,000. It's an amazing amount of things that have to go right for that kitchen. So when that kitchen arrives at that customer's house, if there is a hinge missing, or if there is something broken, something's been broken in transit, etc., the customer is the first person to find out. Desperate to finish their kitchens, Customers descend on Maple Mill from all over the country. It seemed to us the complaints weren't so much about the quality of the goods, but more the incompetent delivery of them. The kitchens look all right. The, the door and the finish is uh, superb. The handles look all right. I mean, I can't understand what the problem is when you come. You have to wait and wait and wait. Christ, we've, we've had three weeks. We've rung them every day, virtually. How long have you been waiting here today? Uh, about two, two and a half hours now. Two. Two hours. Two hours. We'll have to come back now. Every time a customer reports yeah. advance to trading standards, he's in breach of his stop now order. The law designed to stamp out rogue traders. If he doesn't stop the complaints, Vance could be jailed for two years when he returns to court next week. So, to try and tackle the problems, he summoned his inner circle for an emergency meeting. 
So, <clears throat> how do we overcome things being damaged in transit? Mark, over to you, mate. You are in charge of all units getting damaged. So, five kitchens going on a fucking wagon is causing damages, yeah? Yes. And the answer is, more drivers, more wagons, less kitchens on each wagon. Yeah? Yep. Why has nobody bothered to come and tell me? Why has it been left for me to bring it up and then for you lot to agree with me? No, no, it's just because I'm trying to keep the expenses down. I don't give a fuck about money. I give a fuck about getting a good night's sleep and not having to go to fucking court next week. Yeah? So don't fucking try and save me any money, pal. Fucking spend it. Just make sure my kitchens get the perfect. Kelly, what products are being damaged? Units, doors. Right, okay. How the hell are doors getting damaged then? I can understand the unit getting damaged. How the hell is a door getting damaged? See, when they're getting sprayed, they'll peel on the side. They're not putting enough glue on them. Upstairs and whoa, 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 That's whoa, whoa. Why, why, why the fuck are they dropped. going out then? It's, we don't find out this till they've wrapped them up. And then Who's wrapping the kitchens up? In the laminating room, it's just two young kids. I don't know what they're called. You see, we blame the man that's not here. The man that's not here Kenny? gets the blame. Come on, let's see the proof of the pudding. You say his doors are shit. He's going to say they're wonderful. Let's go and fucking lock it on. Right, pick a pile. Right, Rory, you're the man that came up with the idea that they're all shit. You find the shit, please. Well, I'm trying to finish my conversation about doors. Well, don't bother. Find me some shit doors, please. Find me some doors that are peeling, that are not fit to go out, that are causing you, customer services, loads of fucking grief. Oi, don't go to the reject pile from the fucking one we've just opened. What, what, what is this? And why are you trying to prove that you're smart? Right, I'm picking kitchens that are about to go out. That are wrapped up, about to fucking go out. There is no argument, yeah? If there's a fucked up item here, that man cannot argue, yeah? You are going through a pile that's not even been fucking wrapped. So if you find a fault on that, do you know what the rapper's going to say? He's going to say, but I weren't going to send that one, Vance. Look, it's not wrapped. I wasn't going to send it. That's why we check wagons on the way out. When they get to the bottom of the fucking road, they get brought back, because there's no excuses. They can't say, oh yeah, I was going to go out at roundabout, turn round, come back and swap it. So let's stick to what we're at, eh? You pull it from the side there and you'll see it. One of his staff plucks up the courage to show Vance a peeling door. This shit like that just cannot go out. Do you suffer from stress? Go on, tell me the fucking honest truth. Do I look like I suffer from fucking stress? Do I? For God's sake. At times, yeah. No, that's not stress, that's dealing with it. What is stress then? Shout him. That's not fucking stress, that's dealing with it. Fucking hell, it's not my stress, it's some fucker else's stress after I've had my fucking say. You know, where's the stress? I have to deal with it. I'm not fucking, ah, scream. I'm screaming, I'm fucking bad that. It's got to be fucking done tomorrow. I'm going to see it fucking done. That's not my stress anymore. That's getting rid of stress. See you later, stress. Your problem now. In spite of all the complaints, Vance's daily takings are rocketing. 106,000. Fuck it. Is that the best day ever? That must be the best day ever. Whoa, the fuck is happening, man? Well, we're doing something fucking right, aren't we, for God's sake? We're going straight up, John, yeah, to Ramsbottom, yeah? No, not very, Ramsbottom. All right, pal, fucking, I don't know, I've lost, I can't say anything else, can I? Fucking, congratulations, wonderful, you're absolutely fucking marvellous. All right, I'm just behind Magnus, I'm just behind Magnus wagon now, pal. And right up his fucking arse, ready to overtake. Come on, let's overtake number three in the country. Let's get past fucking magnets. Come on, come on. That's the way it's going to go, past number three. Now it's like, whoa, fucking everybody wants one of their fucking kitchens, man. With all the complaints and bad press, we wondered how Vance was able to compete with huge established kitchen companies. What was his secret? 
because it's fucking cheap, isn't it? Because I've wrecked the fucking world for fucking gear that goes to make a kitchen. We can sell a solid piece of granite. It's just a piece of granite. In China, they just chop it out of the fucking ground, yeah? It's a big piece of fucking rock. Boom, boom, boom. Cut it up and sell them. How much are they? Fucking 20 quid a piece. So we sell them for £49.95. They were a thousand pound a fucking piece in these fancy high street stores, giving it all solid granite, you know? Oh, it's so oh is it solid granite? Oh, it's a piece of fucking rock that they've polished, for God's sake, in China. But over here, it's a whiz. Proper piece of granite, you know. Over the past three years, Vance has filmed his business trips to remote regions of China, where he sources the cheapest kitchen products in the world. The undiscovered and the fact that fucking nobody else has been there. No white man's other areas you go, just no European man's been, never mind no European man in the kitchen industry. That's like, whoa, what the fuck are you doing here? Huh. So this factory is going to produce the most beautiful door on the European market. For Mr. Vance. Yeah. I'd like to see it. All I need to do is again. I have to commit myself to this factory. Whatever this factory can manufacture, I will take, yeah? If I can't sell it, then I'll have to eat it, yeah? Okay, what benefits are there going to be to me for giving my word to keep this factory going to full capacity? In China, Vance is respected as a trailblazing entrepreneur, in marked contrast to his image back home. Got a sleazy salesman. I've got a load of old chipboard. I've got a kitchen fitter that doesn't know his artex from his eye level grill. Because tonight we're serving up a generous helping of dodgy kitchens and the road to kipper their customers. Everybody was talking about this 75% off kitchens um, that instigated me calling them. Because what made you part with that project? As far as I was concerned, we've gone through all the costumes. I was getting, you know, a 10 to 15,000 pound kitchen for 5,800. So I wouldn't have had to drive the closet over. Remember, thank you so In parts of Oldham, Vance is more hero than villain. With over 200 staff, he's one of the town's biggest employers. He even did some of his recruiting during his many jail sentences. I met Vance when I was in prison. He was in at the same time. And what were you in prison for? Um, drugs. I was just got into the wrong crowd at college and thought I could make money out of it. Half the lads that work for us downstairs, you've seen them yourself. If they weren't working here, they'd be out burgling and up to all sorts, hanging around the streets, up to no good. And they're here, they're earning a living and keeps them off the streets. It's an icon, isn't it? Just like, um, he's got more say than anybody, I think, if he run for an uh, MP in this area. Or even in Rochdale, he'd get it. No, no problem at all. Look at all he's achieved from nothing. I mean, no one had entertained him. He did it off his own. Did it all with, say, hardly anything stout, with no, no banks, no nothing. He did it all with cash. What he'd earned himself, he'd worked every day to earn to get this, and he's, he's done it, hasn't he? He's, he's achieved everyone's dream. But often it's his staff that cause him nightmares. Before returning to court in two days' time, he's desperate to stem the flood of complaints, so he cracks the whip, Vance-style. Say what, well, you've got a fucking good job, haven't you? Hey, where, hey, where do I get a job like that? I'm getting locked up for not giving a toss, and it's fucking, I'm running around shouting at fucking people all day to do it correct and to do it fucking right, for God's sake. And I'm getting locked up because I don't give a toss. Well, what the fuck am I doing here, then? You're waiting for him. Waiting is not a job, yeah? In the time that you would be normally waiting, go and do something. That bag I just saw, where is it? Well, why is it, why is it in your gob? Right, it's a tenner there. Hey, will you dock head your tenner, please, cigarette? Like a 
quality control manager or something? Yeah, of course I have. But I'm here checking he's doing his job right, because when I checked he wasn't well, he was doing his job right yesterday, the fucking answer was no, it wasn't. Why don't you just get better stuff? Is yes. that you? Why was wrong with the ones I've got? Well, by, by you know telling them off the whole time, makes it seem like your staff ain't very good. Staff make mistakes, don't they? And some people are have different approaches on to how to fucking prevent the staff making further mistakes. And perhaps those guys are more intelligent than me. They have better systems in place on how to stop the staff making mistakes again. Well, I'm not that fucking clever, yeah? So I've got to fucking stop them making mistakes the best way I fucking can. And that is dock them. Hit them in the fucking pocket. It just fell now. It just fell. You know, if I hadn't been here... You wouldn't have believed And you said, it's just fell, and I said, my ass, it just <laughs> fell. Right, whoa, 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 whoa. He's got a lot of respect. Um, he can shout at someone, whereas most companies, they'd walk out the door if they got shouted out like that. But obviously they respect him to put up with it. Vance took us to his old mill in Rochdale where he started selling kitchens nine years ago. Since then, he's changed his company name many times, desperate to keep one step ahead of the bad press. But going back to the place where his kitchen empire began, he had a confession to make about how he did business in the early days. Yeah, this is where it all started. There wasn't any rest here. It was all work, 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 work. There was never enough hours in the day to get the job done. So was this a period where you probably were cutting a few corners? Oh, fucking loads of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is where the shit reputation came from. It was like fucking step drawing some fucking yard, scrap the yard of fucking kitchens. Um, Would you say you were a bit of a rogue trader then? We're a rogue, we're a rogue trader. Um, a rogue trader. Would you say you were then? I suppose you could, yeah, I don't know. Right, what's a fucking rogue trader? Is it someone that's trying to rip anybody? I wasn't trying to rip anybody off. I've never tried to rip anybody off, but I was selling a fucking bag of shit and I was selling, I was selling doors with fucking chunks, chunks missing and all sorts of shit. But they'd come here and they, they'd know what they were buying and they'd see it's all rejects and end of lines. Yeah, we were very fucking bad. Probably the shittiest kitchen job in the fucking world when we were here. We used to have fights, it got to, it got to stages where some customers would get team of lads in Liverpool that would buy a kitchen and they'd be cases like, do you know who the fuck we are and all that, we're coming, we want fucking our money back and blah blah blah. And he gets to say, yeah, yeah, you bring your fucking lads. And we'd end up with a, a massive team of fucking lads here waiting for their team and they'd be... Well, just from someone who bought one kitchen? Oh, God, yeah, exactly. They'd like come the heavy, so we'd like come the heavy back and... Yeah, fucking fights over kitchens, fucking here. Police would be down here all the time over some kind of incident. Bailiffs used to come down here, used to fuck them off. We used to fight them, fucking and crap like that. It was just like a, it was like a gypsy camp down here. Fucking, it was like our territory, fuck off. The day of Vance's hearing has finally arrived. If his past was about to catch up with him, his choice of legal representation wasn't going to help. The first time I represented myself, I, uh, I got away with it. I got, well, I was saying I got away with it. I got not guilty on it. Um, but I was not guilty, so I suppose it wasn't hard to prove. But I suppose that um, probably went to my head. And uh, from then onwards, uh, <clears throat> I thought I could represent myself all the time. And uh, I think it was probably the last time. It was probably the, that was the first time I won, and probably the last time I won. Vance has admitted to 27 out of 31 breaches of his stop now order. He also argued his mitigating circumstances too passionately for the judge's liking. At least he knows I'm fucking real. 
But he sits in his office now and he'll think, fucking hell, he's real, isn't he? Yeah, he don't fucking hide now, does he? Fucking hell, spades are fucking spades with that bloke. So perhaps when I'm giving me evidence, he'll believe what I have to fucking say because he knows I don't all fuck all back. Vance is in need of a drink. He feels he's in a no-win situation. There is no way on this earth if that judge at the end of this, I think so, at the end of this trial, <coughs> if he says to me, Mr Miller, the next time you send out a product that does not conform to contract, i.e., Mrs. Jones wants three worktops that are all one particular colour and she gets one that's a slightly different shade. And of course I'm going to go to prison. It's inevitable I'm going to go to prison. Terry. There's 24 hours to go before the judge passes sentence. This could be Vance's last taste of freedom. He wants to spend it with his son, Kent. I love you too. Kent is everything in him. My best pal. Kent, be very careful, yeah? Friday night to Sunday night, we're together all the time. Unless we decide to have a Monday off as well between us. I do stay at his mum's house every now and again, but never been married, no. No, it didn't work out as lovers and all that crap, no, but we haven't fell out. I never, um, I never live with my dad, I live with my mum, and uh, but I still saw my dad, and no, you said, you've got two, you've got two lives instead of one, so it's an advantage, not a disadvantage. Plus, you, uh, you haven't got that father in the house, have you, so you become more of a man yourself quicker, I think. Mind you, I suppose it affects different people different ways, doesn't it? Like jail affects di people different ways. We wondered how Vance's previous prison sentences had affected him. It seemed that instead of teaching him respect for the law, they'd made him even more lawless. Would it ever have been a deterrent? What? Jail? Of course it fucking would. Years ago, fucking before I knew what it were all about, yeah. When you, uh, yeah, because fuck, you know. Yeah, if they'd have let me out after the first fucking month of going inside, then I would never, ever, ever have gone back. Because it was, it was awful, yeah, you fucking, you know, a strange environment, there was only a kid, you're in a strange environment, it's like, oh, what is all this? And fucking, I want out of here, and you're thinking, doing nothing but thinking about the out. Because you're not trained to fucking think any other way. You're thinking about the out all the time. It's doing your head in you. Oh, you're heartbroken. Fucking, it's awful. But then you get used to it. You don't get bail, and they keep you in there for a long time, and you end up getting used to it, and you you get into the system. So then it's not a deterrent anymore, is it? Because yeah, 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 I can handle that shit. No problem. It's just an inconvenience. But if the fuckers had let me out after a fucking month, wow, I'd be a wanker now. I'd fucking have a fucking job in a fucking shop or somewhere, a restaurant or a fucking... I'd be petrified of the fucking system. And isn't it great? When if, if you don't give a fuck, you can never be beaten, can you? How the fuck can you be beaten if you don't give a fuck? But underneath all the bravado, Vance did care about going to prison. And he showed us a video that he hoped would keep him out. Yesterday I went and just ran round the mill just to... So I can show the judge exactly what my operation is all about. So he can perhaps think, well, I'll kill you. You're yeah, all right, you, know, you don't need all that shit to be a rogue. So, hey, pal. All right, mate, how are you? Hey, you stop swearing. This is on film. The judge is going to be watching this tomorrow. All right, pal. All right, pal. So are you. Good man. Funny. How many kitchens are going out tomorrow? 47. 47. Okay, pal. That's just on the retail side, yeah? Yeah. Are you proud of your business? Of course I am. Look at it. How are you, mate, sir? We're not here today, gone tomorrow. We're here to stay, Your Honour. Customer Services Department, yeah? 
Well, do you all agree that this is a customer services department? Can you all sign sworn statements to the effect? Customer services, all those in customer services, say aye. 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 And just to like show that problems can happen as you talk, that we've had a delivery of legs arrived from China that are supposed to be like this, without a lug on the top, a dowel. Well, when we've opened them, 50% of them are like that. They do have a lug in the top, and our customers are not going to be able to use them. So, I would imagine between yesterday and today, there's probably been about 40 or 50 kitchens gone out with the wrong legs on. So, our job between us now is to make sure all those customers have a brand new set of legs like that. Another problem for the kitchen industry. <laughs> <laughs> what do the rest of the judges think there? <laughs> well, I think you'll be surprised by the scale of the operation yeah. and the number of people you employ. So you definitely I should, reckon I should insist on playing it. Someone well, I wouldn't insist. To gather me to the you will fucking see, see my film. <laughs> <laughs> Just before parting sentence, the judge surprisingly transfers the case from the civil court to an air-conditioned criminal court. Well, they told me that the judge is a bit warm in there. Oh, look at the weather. It's a bit warm. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> oh, I don't quite get that one. But yeah, there's cells here, isn't there? They can send you straight. There's no, there's no means of locking you up in the county court because they don't do much locking up in county courts so you're going to have to bring me to a place where I have security call in to take me away While the courtroom is prepared Vance prepares his final plea for the judge to make it easier for customers to fit what do you honestly think you deserve? what do I deserve as a reminder to stop fucking people around I deserve a 50 grand fine Judge Richard Holman told Vance Miller he was cunning, manipulative and above all arrogant. His performance in court had been worthy of the London theatre. He'd knowingly flouted the stop now order and there was significant risk that he would continue to ignore it. He sent him down to prison for nine months and told him to pay £30,000, roughly half, of the court costs. Locked up in strange ways, Vance has plenty of time to plan his next move. For once, he decides to play by the rules. He instructs a solicitor and formally apologises to the judge. His sentence is immediately reduced from nine months to five weeks. Me. How are you, pal? How are you? Doing? All right, how are you? Good. All right, I'll stay. <laughs> Good. What was it like? Absolutely wonderful. What does it look like? It look like, eh? What's that look like? What's that look like, eh? The local paper turns up with a gift from its readers. From the MN readers. I'd like to thank my streaming news readers, and if they could possibly do it for me again in about 18 months' time, yeah, when I'm ready for another fitness session, then <laughs> please do, yeah. Okay, excellent. Have you got any pal? message? For your customers? Yeah, please do it again. If anybody do wants to buy any heroin, I'm now going into heroin dealing, extortion and racketeering. So if you've got any customers for me, pass them on. I am fucking buzzing, eh? Yeah, you'll probably see uh, a different character now, won't you? Than what went in. You'll probably go back to being fucking the old man's for a while. All fucking large. <laughs> Oh, wow, my, how are you, Vance? How the fuck am I? Brilliant, that is the best health club in the country that I know of. Whenever you want to become fit, that's the fucking place.
Vance heads straight back to the mill and straight into trouble. Watch this now, it's an accident. Oi! What the fucking hell's that here now? Come here, get off. Why don't you fucking watch where you're going before you do it? Yeah? yeah. Who's, uh, how long have you been here? Me. Yeah. About four weeks. Right, well, who the fuck put you on this job? John's one at Right, you. okay. Watch where you're fucking going first. Yeah. That, if I want to stand there, that'll be on the floor in two minutes' time, yeah? Right, sir. End up on the floor and I'd be in court. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Are you all right? Good. Huh? Lovely. <laughs> Right, Good. All right, darling. Good, you? Yeah, you. Good. He's a big Good. You're all right? Yeah, fine. Good. All right, darling. Hiya, Sam. Good. Nice to meet you back. Nice to meet you back. Nice to be seen. Nice to be seen. Have you missed me? I've missed anybody else. Got all around you. I had a fucking brilliant time. See you back. Do you want to see what they've done to me? Look at that. Fuck you hell. <laughs> right, who have I missed? Peace, ma'am. Peace. Part of the deal for Vance's early release is that he employs a management consultant to advise him on how to run his business. Graphs are great for thick bastards, yeah? <laughs> for thick twats that haven't got a clue what's what, they've got a nice little graph that tells them here. Well, I don't need a nice little graph because I've got a memory and I know, right, J. J's bit, getting a bit fucking regular, this fucking J. That graph's in my head, and I don't need it. I'll, I'll put that on the table. Is that clearer than what you're getting? My view it is, your view it is. Yes, that but is it clearer. But it also serves, but too that is available to lots of other people. It's available to all your managers. You can show them a picture. You can say, and that is... I do show a picture. I show them John getting fired. Right, John, piss off, you've lost your job, and that'd be a picture to a lot of you. Yeah. You That's need to let go certain things. You cannot do it all. It's mind, pal. And it's against human rights to say to a man, you can't do your job. You're not allowed to sell kitchens, you, anymore. They got as close to it as possible, they possibly could, couldn't they? They invented this stop now order. But you can't say to a man, right, you're going to have to become an heroin addict or you're going to have to become a burglar because you're not allowed to do your job anymore. Shut the fuck up.